What is it, officer? Man escaped from state prison, ma'am. This is just routine. Who are you and where have you been? Oh, my name's Matson. Laura Matson. Uh, this is my husband, John. Oh, we've been to a party at Pritchard's Point. I'm afraid he overdid it. Um, may I check your driver's license, please? Yes, of course. What about your husband? Well, that's why I'm playing chauffeur. He's his license was suspended. Uh, drunk driving. Well, there's no need to bother him. He's had enough trouble for one night without waking up and staring into the badge of an officer. Very sorry to have inconvenienced you. Well, that's quite all right. I thought you would. If you'd pulled that gun, it would have been all over. Still don't get it. Why'd you break me out? You'll find out when we get where we're going.
Keep him around here to scare off visitors? He served his purpose. Yeah, I guess everybody does. Julian, put the car away, will you? Is Paul waiting? Been in there chewing up the carpet for two hours. Any trouble? No. Joey Faust, this is Julian. I've seen him before in a police bulletin. Beginning to worry. Major Krenner, may I present Joey Faust? Major, does that surprise you, Mr. Faust? It's for real? What army? Oh, there have been several. Take your choice. Please, Mr. Faust. It's lovely. What is it? It's only a bit of shrapnel. It's a keepsake. That piece of shrapnel ended the Major's military career. That will be all, Laura. Um, you did well, my dear, and I'll run along and freshen up while Mr. Faust and I discuss business. You'll excuse me? Major. Go ahead, uh, take off the coat if you wish. I know you'd like an explanation. Why did you set up the break? Oh, I can use you. You have got a reputation in the underworld as somewhat of a genius when it comes to opening safes and vaults. Must have dug that shrapnel out of your head. What kind of an idiot are you, Krenner? I can't poke my nose through a bank door without getting it blown off. Every newspaper in the country's got my picture. You're bitter, Faust. Mean and bitter. You trust no one and you hate everyone. You're the kind of man I need and understand. I know all about your background. Yeah. What do you know about me you couldn't have gotten out of any newspaper? Well, I check closely on all the people I use. I know about the wife who turned you in and the child you've never been allowed to see. I may owe you something. But if you ever mention my daughter's name again, you'll have another hole in your head, I promise you! If you wish. Mr. Fast? Yes, your background explains your behavior. Now, we're conducting experiments requiring fissionable materials. You'll procure them for us. Oh, well, you'll be well paid. That's atom bomb stuff. The government has that locked up tighter than Fort Knox. Precisely. <laughs> Include me a long way out, chum. You're hardly in a position to bargain, Mr. Fuss. A man with a gun doesn't have to bargain. Well, true, but I'm certain Julia would disagree with you on that. You know what one of these bullets will do, son? It'll rip out your spine and roll it up like a ball of string. What's the score, Krenner? You'll work for us faithfully, or you'll be turned over to the authorities. I understand there's a reward of $5,000 on your head. And just what are these authorities going to say about your part in the break? Police need know nothing of my part in the escape. You see, they'll also pay $5,000 for a dead Faust. What do you want? That'll be all for now, Julian. Come along to the laboratory. You got a lab here? Oh, yes. We're completely equipped for our experiments. I made an extensive search before selecting this ranch as an operational base. As you can see, this is quite a serious business. Dr. Ulof, come here. Yes, Major Krenner. Dr. Peter Ulof, Mr. Faust. Mr. Faust has joined us. He'll be supplying you with the vital materials. Dr. Ulof is an eminent nuclear scientist. Would you prepare one of your subjects for the ray treatment, Doctor? We must impress Mr. Faust with the end result of your highly acclaimed scientific labors. Ulaf, 
I've heard the name. Oh, undoubtedly you have. I was quite fortunate in uh, convincing him to continue his work here for me. Now, this ball is of lead, two inches thick. It contains our radioactive materials. Doctor, I told you to move this. The ray could penetrate this lead like butter, and the whole countryside would go up in a mushroom cloud. There is so much you want. So we have to change it. Are you ready for the demonstration? I am ready. Brenner, I agreed to do your dirty work for you, but I got to know what's going on. Dr. Rugloff will be glad to explain. Doctor, this is the principle of X-ray that goes further. X-ray pierces only the outer shell of the body to show what lies beneath. This ray neutralizes all tissue and bone structure in the body. This machine utilizes X-ray, alpha, beta, and omega rays and ultraviolet combining them for best effect and filtering out qualities which would hinder our operations. Yeah. It'll seem more simple to you after you see what goes on. Why are you so worried about this box? Well, even a lead shield doesn't cut off all rays. It simply strains them considerably. certain it still gets through. Any accidental concentration of rays from this apparatus could set up a chain reaction in the materials in the vault. A nuclear fission could result. Doctor? Keep your eye on the guinea pig. Mr. Faust, prove to yourself it isn't done with merit. 
You see? I touch it. Does me no harm. Do you have any doubts, Mr. Faust? No doubts. You can return the animal to visibility, Doctor. Hey, uh... What happens to the guinea pig? The pool off has perfected the ray. The point, there's no danger to the subject. No ill effects at all. from the people, you'll find the guinea figures unharmed. Satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Faust? As you could no doubt deduce, such a mechanism as this has unlimited possibilities. Yeah, like what? Well, that'll come later. First things first, please. You see? No harm done at all. Perfectly healthy. I imagine you've seen enough for one day, hmm? And you certainly must be tired after your trip. Yeah, I could use a little sleep. I'm sure Julia's found some clothes that'll fit you. What uh, is in here? It's no concern of yours. Come on, Mr. Faust. I shouldn't be gone long. Leave the gate open and I'll lock it when I get back. I don't think you need to be cautioned about Faust. He's dangerous and locks mean nothing to him. So I want to where you can watch his door at all times. Keep him in his room, you understand? He won't go nowhere. All right. Faust. You in there, Faust.
What is it you want up here? Take it easy, Doc. I just came up to see you. Thought maybe they had you locked up in there. Not I. Only what's left of my soul. Came to get some answers. You seem about the only one around here who isn't a member of Krenner's fan club. I have nothing to say. I'm a servant. Major Krenner does much thinking for me. What's he got on you, Doc? Why do you ask me these things? So I can get some answers. How'd you get mixed up in this? My daughter. He's holding her. In that cheese box? We'll open it up, let her out. Please, Mr. Faust, I do not joke. Not about my daughter. All right, Doc. Start at the beginning. How'd you get over here? At the end of the Second World War, I fled my own country with my baby daughter. My wife had died of experiments. I had been forced to perform on her in a concentration camp. Her own wife? All my patients wore hoods. I couldn't see their faces. I didn't know my wife was one of them until it was too late. Well, that still doesn't explain how you got here. I came to this country as a refugee. No one knew I was a scientist except spies like Krenner. After my wife died, I wanted no more of science. But Krenner forced me to come here. Abuse your daughter? If I do not do as I'm told, she will be killed. If I carry out their orders, she has security. I have only a few more months to live. But Krenner has seen to it that she will be provided for. <laughs> you don't think he's going to keep that promise, do you? What choice have I? Soon I'll be dead. But my daughter's life is at stake. You have indicated that you could open it. Not now, Doc. I got problems. Please, Mr. Faust, release my daughter and take her to some safe place. Knock it off, Doc. I got my own troubles. Then you can't open it. I could open that thing blindfolded. Quite a little psychologist, aren't you, Doc? That's good reasoning. Downstairs, Faust. And please try not to be amusing. Good night, Dr. Ulo. What's next, Matahari? You gonna shoot me? Krenner probably will when he gets back. He doesn't appreciate disloyalty. Julian's a loyal type. All it got him was a lump in the head. He's still out. I couldn't bring him around. <laughs> What's so humorous? For a dame that's supposed to be so greedy, you don't know a thing about playing a whole card. Oh? Ever think how much that ray would be worth to a guy who wanted to rob a bank? Well, 
That thing I could get into every vault in the country in broad daylight. Dream on, Buster. It sounds pretty. Of course, to take on jobs like that, a fellow would have to have a little help. Now, uh, splitting the take of a few of those would uh, pay you a lot more than Krenner will ever give you in a lifetime. You need background music for this commercial. Full orchestra and violin. All right. Don't believe me. Don't be a gambler. Should I gamble on having my throat slit by Krenner or being shot by you? Well, honey, that's a chance you'd have to take. Just like the risk I run every time I get onto that ray. Well, if you don't take a chance, you never know. I'll keep it in mind. Huh? Thanks, Julian. He was trying to make a deal. You must have heard what he said. He was talking a double cross. Yeah, I heard him. Sounded like you were listening awful close, too. Keep quiet about this, Julian. Keep quiet and I'll help you. You know that Krenner's gonna blame you for letting him out of his room. We've got to help each other now. Do not to take your eyes off a fast door. Oh, him, he's out cold. I went in and picked up the bottle. Figured you didn't want him nipping in the morning when he wakes up. You did right. He's got to be sober. Good night. Night. What'd you do that for? Save your own skin? This idea of yours does interest me. I figure you need me more than I need you. I thought you were out in the lab. <laughs> what was that for? Don't try it. Don't even think about it. Julian told me about your talk with Faust. I didn't make any deal? No, not yet, but I know you. My memory is too good. I remember our other deals. You don't think I gave you enough of a share, do you? What are you talking about? What could I possibly have in common with Faust? He's a hood. <laughs> Just the type you go for. Laura, I don't care what you do with your life, but when it interferes with my plans, I draw the line. <laughs> well, that's a dot on the eye. Lay off the vodka. I want you ready when I need you. If you will relax, Mr. Faust, there will be no pain. You may lose consciousness for a few moments after you become invisible, but there should be no avail effect. How do you know it'll work on a human? Do you know what'll happen? We made hundreds of such experiments. There can be no slip up. Come on, doctor, we don't have all night.
happens. Is he all right? His pulse is quite rapid, but that is to be expected. Well, why is he breathing like that? You may be shocked. Faust, can you hear me? Can you speak? Faust, try to sit up. You stop breathing. Well, do something. He's gone. What? Listen to me. You'll remain invisible till I want to return to normal. So you're... If I choke you hard enough, you'll bring me back. <sighs> Just showing you how badly you need me. And my loyalty costs money. I told you we'd be well paid. You neglected one thing, chum. How much? A thousand dollars. A thousand every time you do a job. Craner, if I'm going to be hit, I want money. Lots of money. Well, what do you expect? I can't pay oh, that. Oh, yes, you can, Major. I'm sure you can. Shall we talk it over in private? Downstairs? Hmm? Over here, Major. I'm waiting. After you, Major. So you don't think a thousand is enough? Hmm? <laughs> You're a real case, Major. You think everyone's supposed to jump when you open your big fat mouth when you've forgotten one thing? Forgotten what? You gotta have me, chum. Now, whatever you're up to, I'm worth plenty to you, or you wouldn't have gone to all that trouble of breaking me out. You're a dead duck without me. What do you have in mind? Well, walking into that nuclear vault's worth, uh, about 25 grand. Let's get a little air in here. 25 grand? You're, you're mad! I don't have that kind of money! Well, then you do the job, Major. That's the figure. 25 grand in small bills. C-O-D, take it or leave it. All right, you'll go tonight. Laurel will drive you. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I, I just thought I heard
You didn't see anyone during all this? Well, no, sir. I, I heard a clicker noise, like the wheel on the vault was turning, and I, I told him about it, but neither one of us saw anything. That's right. There was nothing when I started to check the other guard post. Then what? Well, I, I turned around, and, uh, and the vault door was open and all, all by itself. And, and I got up to check it, and I, and I pulled my gun, and something was all over me, and then the next thing I know, I'm, I'm waking up. What about the alarm panel? When did it get wrecked? I don't know, Mr. Drake. It was okay when I came on duty. It uh, couldn't have happened while I was checking posts, or he'd have noticed anyone tampering with it. It's set up with each of us covering the other. Yes, but it's quite obvious neither one of you were covering the other. In fact, there was no coverage at all. All right, Doctor. What was it you wanted to tell me about the guinea pig? It was only a matter of time. It died despite of resistance it was developing against radiation. What about Faust? It's too early to tell. But each time it will take longer to reduce him to invisibility, less to return him to normal states. He will also develop a resistance. What about the new material, the X-13? I need more time to study it. Its properties are different from other nuclear materials. I do not like keeping it here. Its bombardment ratio is also much lower. You're uh, afraid of an explosion? Yes. We'll use the X-13 on Faust. It could mean his death. Doctor, I'm not concerned with the welfare of one man. I must know the full potential of your invention because my aim is to make an entire army invisible. You understand? An entire army. I did not agree to kill a man by deliberate radiation poisoning. You're too old-fashioned to be a genius. Two scientists have brought the world to what it is today, and you can hardly blame me for taking advantage of your discoveries. Faust may already suffer from poisoning, but it's curable. X-13 will put him beyond that point. I will not use it on a human. If you have an alternative, Doctor, I'd be very happy to discuss it with you. <laughs> oh, that ray is something. Something every cheap, safe cracker in the country's been dreaming of. Too bad the doctor didn't invent it years ago for the right people. We wouldn't be cooped up here now. You better lay off the giggle water. He can't use you drunk, you know. Maybe it's a case of my using him. Now, come on with a drink. Oh, I could have walked into that vault in broad daylight and done the same thing. It was so easy, I felt like I was taking credit money away from him. Interesting thought, Faust. This time, you do it the hard way. In daylight. Well, through with me so soon, huh? Gonna get me killed off. Oh, no, not at all. But I've learned that security has been tripled on the vaults during the night shift. Six men. But it hasn't been strengthened during the day. Where do you get these gems? He has sources. You better believe him. One more haul, and we'll have enough for our present supply and work. Uh-uh. You won't need this, and we're ready in the lab.
can't get away with this in broad daylight, Joey. Why don't you stop running Krenner's errands? Let's not get any more involved. Don't get emotional, baby. You're nice as a playmate. Let's keep it that way. Let's understand that. Mm -hmm. Well, they may not see you, but they're bound to see the lead container when you try to get it out. You got it all wrong, honey. Today's the day we take the bank. If broad daylight, you're crazy. You're talking to a professional, remember? I don't have to worry about time locks or anything like that. Just walk in, pack up the loose cash, and walk out, and you, sweetheart, are going to be waiting for me. Oh, don't even say it. Your cut will be 40%. I'll have to climb out. Thank you very much for your cooperation, miss. I only hope it does some good. I'm sure. Security. Good day now. It is. How long ago? Okay. Guess we can't stop it now. Story's out. The reporter was at the police station when the alarm came in. Well, there's no doubt it was Faust. Everyone at the banks identified him. Well, what can we do? man makes himself invisible, locks mean nothing to him. If he did take the X-13, what defense do we have against him? Nothing. None. Hold it here. There must be something we can do. Yeah, if I can just get down to Eula. I can't get back to the house till I'm invisible again. Police report the so-called invisible man who robbed the Coatesville National Bank has been identified as Joey Faust, escaped convict and safe cracker. Witnesses said the robber became visible before their eyes. Citizens are warned. Oh, he's got to come back. And that tramp, too. I'll teach them to double-cross me. Take my bags outside and then watch for them. Right. I know some people in Mexico. We can go there and start all over again. I know what I've been, Joey, but I can change all that. What are you doing? Giving you your split. You're on your own, baby. But, but you said we'd be together. Honey, right now I need a car more than I need you. So you can start walking anytime. 
But you just can't go off and leave me. Joey! Goodbye, Laura. Catch a fast and hear his story, they'll be all over us. I will not. What? I've been running away most of my life. Doctor, there's something wrong with your formula, but we'll work it out in a new location. An invisible army is worth billions. An army of dead men, Major. I'm taking Marie with me. I'm sure you'll come along. No. Marie, my dear. Oh, Doc, what's wrong? Why do I keep appearing and disappearing? I don't know. I needed more time to study the excerpt team before trying it out on you. Oh, fine. Well, you're going to do something about it. I've got to be normal, and you're going to take care of it. I will, but not in this place. Well, why not? I got him locked up. I want to be taken away from here, my daughter and I. Only then I will treat you. But... All right, let's blow out of here. Forget something. Where's Faust? He's in the house. Major knows all about you and Faust. Said you'd be back. Inside. Come on down, Faust. Put that thing down. I take my orders from the Major. I have to. The Major? Let me. Julian. You believe what he told you about your son being alive in prison and in Europe? Yes, I do. You're a fool. Your son's dead, Julian. Krenner's been using you all along. She's right. So you had to come back. Come on. I told you to hit the road, it was for your own good. But, Joey, please, please give me a chance. Sweetheart, you had your chance in. Joey! All right, come on. Come on, Judith. Do you know what the Krenner is after? A process, so an invisible army can invade your country. I don't care about Krenner or his army, I care about me. Then all this is futile. Brenner has found me before he'll find me again. I've got money, and I know places across the border he never heard of. Now, how long are these treatments going to take? You may someday be declared a martyr, Mr. Faust. A man who sacrificed himself so that the divisible army might not overrun your country. What are you trying to pull? You want it out of here. I made a deal with you. Now you cross me and I'll kill you. I'm a dying man, Mr. Faust. Radiation poisoning. You're dying, too. You're worse off than I. You're lying. You have only weeks, perhaps days, to live. You used me just to get away from Krenner. To free Maria. I had no choice. Come on. Are you so intent upon evading the police for a few remaining days? Don't you care what Krenner is doing to your country? Why should I care? What did my country ever do for me but try and bury me in a concrete tomb for the rest of my life? I'm thinking of my child. You should think of yours. Perhaps you deserve prison. But didn't Maria deserve what has happened to her? Did her mother need to die? Is this the kind of world you want for your child? That is what an invisible army will bring. I have seen it. How much longer I got? A month. No more.
No, no, thank you. Don't wait for me. There is a man who has unlocked every door except the one to his own soul. Now he has the key. Come, my dear. We must find a telephone and notify the police. Drake and Smith, security. Sorry, I got my orders. No one enters this area. Too much fallout for safety. All right, officer. Just a minute. with you in a minute, Smitty. Well, Doctor, you and your friends have succeeded in blowing up half the county. There isn't enough left out there to make ashes. I'm deeply sorry, of course. But as I told you before, I didn't do anything by choice. I warned Major Prenner of the danger involved. But you must realize his was a deranged mind. All he could think of was the creating of an invisible army and the power such a force would give him. You know, Doctor, this idea of an invisible army is quite interesting. Imagine what our counterintelligence could accomplish if they were able to become invisible whenever necessary. The Central Intelligence Agency has already discussed the possibilities with me. But my friend, think of the danger if the secret were stolen from us. 
It has happened before, you know. Perhaps it would be better if we let the secret die with me, Jukrana and Joy Faust. It's a serious problem. What would you do? <laughs> 